Hey guys, it's the Coin Center again, and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today, I'm really excited because I'm going to walk you through creating a RESTful client. And this RESTful client is going to allow us to call web services throughout the web and then basically consume the response of those services in our Unity application. So, I'm gonna be walking you through the example that I created. I'm gonna show you some of the core pieces that I created for you and also made available via GitHub. So what I'm gonna do is jump into Unity and I start working on it. Thank you guys. All right guys, so let me show you what I built for you guys to work with Unity. And for those of you who haven't have experience with creating a REST client and actually calling web services, I'm going to be creating a web services in this video. It's going to be a very simple web service, but it's going to basically allow us to do simple HTTP methods such as doing an HTTP get, doing an HTTP post, a delete, and then also a put. So what I'm going to be doing is basically creating something very simple that we can call from within Unity, and then I can show you some of the more advanced options. These client library that I created that is going to be available and actually it's actually available in via github right now you can download it you can do anything you like and it's basically offered for you to be able to use it in your projects i'm going to be adding more features as i get more comments from you guys and any suggestions you know i'm, I'm more than welcome to to make changes and additions if you need to so let me go ahead and walk you through what i have right now and then once i show you some of the implementation we can jump into an actual example so right now this project is the one that i submitted to github and github there is a unity rest client and you can see that the entire project is available there you can download it from github.com forward slash dilmar v forward slash unity rest client and i started it yesterday so you can see that that was my latest commit so there's not a lot of functionality in it but there's some common http methods that you can use to call right now, I can, I'm gonna be adding more things such as security and and also, you know, maybe more methods as we, you know, as we get more into it. Okay, so what do I have right now? What am I looking at? So right now I'm looking at a REST client example and this REST client example is basically making a call to the Azure Vision API. So as you can see, I have, you know, basically a POCO and Apoco is basically a, a plain a plain object. And this basically allows me to pass in two of the parameters that I'm exposing through the inspector. I'm exposing the client ID, and I'm also exposing a secret. I'm also exposing a base URL. So if I go back to Unity and we look at the inspector, you can see that some of those variables are exposed, such as, like I say, base URL, the client ID, and secret. And, and this is just the requirements to call the Azure Vision API, they require that you pass in the client ID, you pass in the secret, and then the way that this works is you give it a URL, and that URL is the image that we're gonna be doing OCR. And OCR means that we're gonna be doing optical optical character recognition, meaning that we're gonna be extracting data and data from an image. So Azure has that capability. They have a lot of different web services available. This was just one that I pick. But instead of using theirs, I want to build our own and actually, you know, show you how to build your own and also call call your own. So for now, we can just, you know, run this example and I can show you how it works. The, the other piece, now that I built the request header, I also built the image URL, is that we need to actually call and actually create a, a star a core routine. So the reason why I'm doing this is because this is some of the you know requirements for the Unity implementation for calling web services. They require that you they do what's called an async operation. And with an async operation, you have to check when the asynchronous call is completed. When it's completed, we get a result back. So I'll show you the code and explain that to you because I think it'll, be, it'll make more sense as I show you the code versus explaining all the theory. So, the way that it works and the way that I build it is I created a, West, uh, a REST web client. And you can see this one right here. And I wanted to make it as simple as it was going to be to just make a call. I didn't want to have to have all this configuration and all this crazy stuff. So it's actually pretty easy to call it. You, I implemented a singleton pattern as well, which is also included in this package. 
And the way that it works is you just basically call the web, basically the name of the class, which is REST web client. Then you tell it you want the singleton, which is gonna be the instance. And then you tell it what method you want to call. So if I were to do something like this, let's say that I want to implement this in my own project, all you really have to do is just in incorporate the REST client folder that I'm giving you. And then you just say instance, and then you have different methods in here. If you type in HTTP, you can say, okay, I wanna call a delete. I wanna call a get, I wanna call a post. And I put, depending on what you need, if you need to delete a record from a web service, this is the one that you will call. And then you can see the parameters are shown on the right hand side. The, for instance, the delete takes a URL, which is the URL that we're putting on the top, or you can just pass in the URL. The other thing that it takes is a callback because the reason why I wanted to do a callback is because I wanna know, okay, when, when the delete finishes, I wanna get a callback to a specific method. In this case, I just click on, on, on request complete and passing the call, callback object that we're getting back, and then basically displaying some of the some of the different properties that I included in the client, which one of them is the status code, the data that we're getting back. In this case, we wouldn't really get any data because we are just deleting, but we will get a status code and we also might get an error. So that's why I always make sure that those are coming back. Well, in the case that we're only doing a delete, we're just gonna get the status code. Data might not be populated, an error might not be populated if you're not getting an error, but if you do get an error, you will get you know a fill with that information. But I'll show you that in the code. But just know that these are the methods that are available right now. And like I said, I'm gonna be adding more. Okay, so in this in this case, I needed to pass in the base URL, which is gonna be the URL that I'm passing in here. So that's the first parameter. Then you do a comma, and then the next parameter in this case, because I'm doing a post. And doing a post is normally doing an insertion to a web service. So if you're creating, let's say you're creating a player, you're creating an order, you're creating an invoice, those type of things are normally done in a post. If you're doing a put, that's normally something where you're gonna be doing an update. If you're doing a delete, of course, it's gonna be deleting something, a resource, that's what, that's what REST calls them. Or if you're doing a get, is normally because you're gonna get data. So. The first parameter is gonna be the URL that we need to call. The next parameter, it's gonna be the actual data that we need to post. So we're gonna be posting an object in this case. So I want to post an object that is that is type, that is actually uh, an object type. And then in this case, it's gonna be a JSON object. So I'm passing in this entire, this entire object, which is converted to JSON by using the JSON utility that Unity provides. And then this code here just don't, if you haven't deal with, dealt with delegates, don't just, it, it's really actually really simple. All this is doing is you're cre I'm creating an action. The, this can actually be called anything we want. I can call this request. I can call, I can call this, we go back, I call this the response. I just call it R because it's gonna be the object that I'm getting back from the on request complete. So the first argument, it's gonna be the, the response that I want. This is using a Lambda. So. I can call this whatever I want, but then just know that this is gonna be the method that is gonna get called once this HTTP post finishes. And then we're gonna basically pass in the response, which is gonna be passing here. And then the last parameter is gonna be headers. And if you notice, if we look in here, we do a comma, this is nullable. So meaning that this is not required. If I didn't wanna pass in headers, I could actually do this and then end it with a semicolon. And that should actually work. I'm missing one parenthesis. So I made the last parameter optional because you don't, you don't have to pass in a header every time. In this case, the, this web service specification requires that you pass in the authentication, which in this case is a client ID and a secret. But if you just have something that is open up, it's open and you don't need security on it, you really don't need to pass in anything there. But in a lot of cases, you might need to pass in something like language, you might need to pass in you know, what the content type is gonna be. So there's a lot of different things that you might need to pass in the headers in order for the web servers to respond to you in the appropriate manner based on the specification of the person that is creating the web service or the, you know, the company that is giving you the specs. So that's how this works. Let me show you the, the implementation right now. So I'm gonna go and show you the REST web client. So this is actually fairly simple. There's not a lot in here and and I might say simple because I've been dealing with web services for a long time, 
But one of the things to keep in mind in here is, like I said, I, I didn't want to have to, you know, create a mono behavior, have to deal with that. And I ended up creating a singleton class. And if we go into that singleton class, what, what this is actually doing is just creating a sing, a, one instance, a static instance of the class, which is going to be the generic type that I'm passing that I'm passing in. So the generic type that I'm passing in, in this case, is going to be the REST web client. And then I'm just basically telling it to create a static variable and then exposing a property, which is the instance of the type generic that I'm passing in. I'm going to go through the generics in more, you know, in more depth in one of the future videos. So don't get overwhelmed if I'm going over this. So just keep in mind that if I'm creating a singleton, this instance, this variable is going to be available for you. And there's going to be an instance that is created in, you know, in the runtime, in the pipeline of the game, that it's just going to be a singleton instance. So just know that that's what this is going to do. So let's go back into here. So the way that this work, the way that this works is going to be, so now we're creating a class of type REST web client. This can be called whatever you want. In this case, I'm creating a RESTful client, so I needed to make it, you know, give it a name that was meaningful. And then I'm just calling the singleton, which is the one that I just show you here. And then it takes a generic, so I tell it what the generic is going to be, which is going to be, you know, the type of REST web client. So by doing this, I know that by calling REST web client, I don't have to create an instance of it. I know that by doing a static call, which I show you here, that I that I'm basically gonna get. So the way that this is gonna work is as soon as I make this call, it's gonna check and see, okay, does that instance exist? If it doesn't exist, it creates an instance and it also creates a game object with the name of the instance type that you're trying to create. So you know that when you call this method, you're gonna have an instance in memory. So that's what this is doing. Okay, so now that that is done, the other thing that I wanted to do is I, for the most part, the web services that I've been dealing with over the past few years have been communicating with JSON. So when I say JSON, if you don't know what JSON is, here's an example of a JSON file. It's basically a structure, it's just basically structured data that it's not as verbose as an XML. So just make sure that you read on JSON. I, I think I should do another video that goes into more in depth of what JSON is. But if you don't know what JSON is, look it up and then come back to this video. So that's basically how I'm transmitting data. I'm, I'm requesting JSON data and I'm also posting JSON data. So just know that that's what this default content type is gonna be. If you wanna change it, you can change it as well. You can change my implementation if you wanna allow for more dynamic content types, even or even be able to pass it through one of the arguments of these methods. So the next piece of this is I wanted to show you some of the some of the methods that I have available. So I show you that I had the HTTP get. So I'm just going to collapse them all. So you can see them all here. So the first one is going to be the HTTP get. And like I said, it takes a URL. It also it also takes a, a callback. So this is going to be the method that you're going to be that this is going to be calling when it's completed. So the callback can be anything that you want. You might be deleting a, a or actually getting a player. And when you get that player, you might want to update a screen. So in those cases, you want to you know have a callback to a method that you own. You might need to update your canvas, or you might need to do you know something else that you're doing in your game logic that might need to be executed after the get gets called. The other thing that I wanted to do as well is I wanted to include a delete because you might you know you might be deleting a player, you might be deleting you know some temporary data that you are hosting or you're storing in your web service. So that's why I, requ I included this one. It also takes a URL and it also takes a callback. The other thing that I wanted to include was an HTTP post and like I explained in the beginning of this video, this is normally for inserting data. So if you wanted to create a, a new player, so you would pass in you know, the URL for that player endpoint. This is the body, so you need to specify, you, know, you might need a username, you might need a password, or you might need an email, you might need you know, some additional information about the player. I also have a callback here, just like I do on these other ones. But one of the additional parameters that I have in here is headers. The reason why I included headers in my case is because I needed to include the client ID and the client secret, which is very common for, for web services. And then the last one was going to be a put. I might need to update the player email or I might need to update the player statistics. So whatever it is that you're trying to update is normally done in a put. 
and then it also takes a URL and it also takes a callback. So now let me show you some of the implementations. So the implementation on, on most of these ones are very similar. They're actually very simple. So normally when you're when I'm dealing with you know HTTP requests, I'm using the Unity Web Request, which comes from if we hover over here, you can see that it comes from the Unity Engine that networking. And this is Unity's implementation for making web requests over the web. So normally the way that this works is you have to do the using because this is going to have to be disposed at some point. So the syntax is you use using, you declare your variable with your type, which in our case, we're going to do a web request. We need to say that we're going to, so there's a static, there are static methods that are available in the web request. And just like I show you the ones that we implemented, our get, the other one's going to be delete, the other one's going to be post, and then also a put. But Unity also provides you with a head. I haven't really needed to use a head just yet in all the stuff that I've been doing. But if you need to do a head, you can also include that one. And then they also have some other methods that are available here, such as, you know, doing, if you wanted to escape a URL, if you wanted to serialize a form, and then, you know, there's other verbs in here that are available as, as enums. So for now, I think I only need to get and then the ones that I just mentioned. So what I'm doing is basically wrapping unity functionality into a method that we can control and actually makes it a lot easier. So I don't have to know all the details that unity needs in order for me to do an HTTP get. So, so like I say, the syntax is going to be the unity web request and then the variable name equal the static method, which in our case is going to be get and then the URL that we're passing in. So the next thing to keep in mind is this is going to be an enumerator. And the way that I, that I did this is I did it as an enumerator. And then I'm basically doing a yield return web request. And then the way that this is going to work, because this is going to be an asynchronous operation. And you can see that by you looking at the comments here, this is actually returning a unity web request async operation. So the way that this is going to work is this is basically going to yield until so it's going to return if it hasn't if it, if it hasn't completed the only time that is going to that is going to be done is as soon as we get to the as soon as we get here and if we have for whatever reason we have an http network error i wanted to return an error with the callback so remember that action that i told you that we were specifying in here and i was doing on request on request complete and passing the request if we go back into here I'm actually calling that callback. So this is going to be the method you're passing as an action. So it's going to be a pointer to your, basically to your method. So in this case, I have an error. So I, the callback to it, it's going to be a response. It's going to have the status code and also the error that I'm getting from the web request. And this is going to be an object that I created. And this is one of the models that I have in here. I'll show you some of those in just a minute. The the other instance in here, if let's say that everything was success, successful, we didn't get an error, but the web request was completed, then in that case, I'm checking to see, okay, was the web request completed? If it did complete it and we didn't get a network error, I try to parse the error, the data back. So the way that I do this is I get the downloaded handler, and then there's a property there called data. I convert that to UTFA, and then I get the string representation of that. And then I put that into a variable called data. Then I call, I do my callback, which I use the same object. I get the status code. I get the error, just in case there was an error, which in this case, there might not be an error because I was checking for that here, but I, I put it in there just in case. And then I'm also filling it with the data, data that I'm converting. So that's how the get works. Now, if we go back to the HTTP delete, so in this case, I'm calling the delete method that Unity Web Request provides, and I'm passing the URL. I do the exact same thing here. I, I do a send web request, and then I check to see, do I have any errors? If I do, I, you know, I make my call back. And then if everything works and we're completed, I, change, I basically send back to the callback a response object with the status code that the web server returned. So the delete is pretty simple. And then if we go into our HTTP post, so this is the case when we might need to insert data. So normally that's where you'll do in the HTTP post. So the first thing that I do, I convert, I convert this information to JSON. And I think I'm doing this twice, to be honest, just by looking at my implementation. Because what I did here 
is I'm converting this to JSON already, so I don't need to do it. I don't need to do it in here one more time. So what I'm gonna end up end up changing, I'll, I'll make a change and then check it in. So I'll just change I'll just change it to body. And I don't need to do this again because it's already been changed. And then I'll just rename this to be body and then body right here. And I think, yep. So the way that it's gonna work is I'm also passing a URL like I show you. The body is gonna be already be in JSON format. So what I'm gonna be requiring is that you convert the data to JSON ahead of time. And then if, if you haven't done that, then this is probably not gonna work. And just know that this is gonna to have to be JSON just for now. And then I can add more options later and then check to see what data you're trying to send and then serialize it to the data that your web service is gonna need. So for now, I'm doing the exact same thing, except that I'm calling a post. I'm passing in the body, so if you look at the post implementation, it takes in a string, which is gonna be the post data. In our case, it's gonna be the JSON data that is serialized. And then the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to add a basically a request header. So this is also my own type. I'll show you that what that is, but all that is is actually just a key in a value object. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if the person that it's making a call to the HTTP post didn't request headers, then I skip over this. If they have headers, then I go in and set the header on the web request. So I'm basically gonna go through and loop through each one of the headers. So let's say in the case where we're specifying the client ID. So in this case, I'm specifying a client ID and a secret. So when, what I ended up doing is I needed to, so if we go back to Unity, I needed to pass in the client ID, which is actually this one, and then the secret. So what I ended up doing, if we go back to, into my REST web service client, and what I'm doing is I'm specifying, specifying that information here as a key and actually as a value. And, and looking at it right now, I think I'm gonna have issues with the implementation of that because let me look at let me look at something here and this is actually great because I'm, I'm troubleshooting so if we go here and let me look at all my examples so i did an example on the on the azure vision api and the way that this works right now oh it's actually going to work right now because this is actually the implementation that i did previously on another example that i did where it was a console application so the header, the header was actually, the key was name OCP and then Azure has a weird naming convention, but this is actually the, the name of the key and then the value was gonna be this value. So in our case, that's what I'm passing in. I'm passing in a key and a value, which happens to be the key that I'm passing in through the example and then the variable, it's gonna be that and then the value is gonna be that. So I think we're good. I was thinking we, we needed to specify a different key and a value, so this actually is gonna work. So the other thing that I needed, I needed to specify was gonna be the content type that I'm gonna be posting to. So in this case, it's gonna be application JSON. And then, so that's what I'm, that is, that's what I'm actually specifying in here. And then I also needed to include the data, data that I was gonna be uploading. And Unity has this weird uploader, upload handler. And I say weird is because to me, this is not really intuitive. But this is a way that it works, this is a way that they have it. So if you need to include body data on a post request, this is the syntax that they have. They do web request, upload handler. And I'm imagining that the upload handler is gonna be data that we're uploading. And it's just different to what I've done in the past. But know that that object is the object that is gonna hold the data that you're posting on the body. So I'm doing the same thing and converting these to bytes. Because if you look at this upload handler raw, it takes a by array. So I'm basically getting the bytes out of the body. The body was a string. So if you want to convert the string to bytes, there is this there is this utility in system that takes encoding the UTF-8 UTF and then give bytes and you pass in the string value. So that's going to get you the bytes representation that we then insert into that object. And I apologize if I'm talking a lot. It's just there's a lot of different concepts in here that I feel like I need to explain. So once we have the data in the body of the request, which is what we did here, then we do the same thing that we did right above it. We need to actually call the same, the same web request, which is gonna be an async operation. We do a yell return with that method in it. 
then we check to see, okay, did we get any errors? If we didn't get any errors, then we should be good to go. If we did get errors, we're gonna call the, we're gonna do the callback. If everything worked okay, and we have a basically completed request, then I try to get the data out of the, out of the down, download handler, just like I did right above it. Because a lot of times when you're doing a post, you might get data back. You might get an ID that was updated or, or some information about the post request. And that will vary depending on the specification of your web service. So you're more than welcome to change this implementation. But if the implementation is returning data, you're gonna get the data back here. And then I'm also doing a callback just like I did right above it. And then the last one is gonna be a put. And I'm also doing an object body. Let me make sure that I, I keep it the same way. Yeah, I think, I think in this case, I'm gonna do exactly what I did right above it. I'm going to require that you pass in a string. And then this is just gonna be body. And then we'll just do body here, just to keep everything consistent. And then the only difference between the previous method and this method, this is gonna be normally for updating data. So I'm allowing you to basically do exactly what we did above it. You might also need headers. I just didn't feel like it was required, but thinking about it now, I'm going to, I'm going to be adding it because you might need to specify headers as well on the put. And then I'm just basically just gonna copy the if headers does not equal null, then we're gonna be setting the headers right you know what right when we're creating the web request and then we could probably move this to its own method later on for now we can just duplicate it and then paste it so i'm going to allow headers to be passing on the put and then we might need it on every single one of them to be honest because for the most part i think on the delete i don't see you needing headers on the get you might need to specify headers but let's just keep it this way and then we can add more features if we need to do so on the HTTP put, everything is the same as the post, except that we're, that we're calling a put. We're now also checking to see if we don't have headers defined. If we do have headers defined, I'm gonna set the headers on the web request. So, and then I'm doing everything else, you know, it's everything else is gonna be the same. So just to prove that this is working, I'm just gonna make a call to the, the Azure Vision API. I, I actually hit my quota, so I might not have enough quota to be able to call this, but let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, we should be able to at least call, and you can see here that I was getting an access in, I think it's because my trial expired, but let's just call it again and see what happens. But before I call it, I wanna have breakpoints and I wanna show you how this works, because I think there's nothing better than showing you the debugging execution of code, and that works for me. I think it makes a lot of sense when I debug through code, so I think it's gonna help you in understanding how this is working. So I'm using VS, uh, Visual Studio Code and also the Unity debugger, but you're more than welcome to use any other editors. Okay, so now that I have debugging turned on, I'm gonna hit play and this is gonna allow us to debug it. So you can see in here. Okay, so the first thing that I do, and I can look at my variables here, is I know that at this point, I, you know, I have a, I have a this, which in this case is gonna be the instance of rest client example. So if we go and expand this, this is gonna be a game object, so we can we should be able to see everything that we have here available. So I haven't defined, I haven't declared the this variable just yet. So if you look at client header, which I just saw and I lost, and let's just go, oh, okay, it's right here. So if I step over, you can see that I now have a client header and we can see that we have the key and the value. So we know that that is working. The next piece is gonna be an image URL. So if I step over, I should also have an image URL, which is the object that Azure Vision API takes. And this happened to be the image that we're gonna be reading the text from. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be stepping into this, and I wanna show you the singleton execution. So right now, if I hover over this instance, is it actually hasn't been created just yet. So if I go ahead and, so instance is gonna be null the first time. And it looks like it wasn't null because it was created previously. It looks like it's, yeah, it was created already. So, and, and that's what I was trying to decide why I was getting. So if we look at the instance right now, we, we do have an instance because it's actually came back with a variable and it was actually created. So 
let's go ahead and step over and step over and then it looks like we let's see let me go into it and I'm gonna go back into unity and hit play and let's see make sure okay so it looks like access denied because the subscription key or wrong API endpoint was was called that's fine we got we had an unauthorized but I think it was working the piece that I wanted to show you is the us getting into the post so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint here so that we can get into it so let me go ahead and hit play and okay so we don't need to go into that anymore I'm gonna get a breakpoint here hit play and then so we, we were able to call the HTTP post so I can see the URL that we're calling we can see the body of the data that we're calling which is interesting because I did pass in I did pass in some data so let me go ahead and stop it and see what the problem is and if I look in here this is gonna be the image URL which I, I did pass in to JSON so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a breakpoint here I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna make sure that this works so let me okay so let me go ahead and play hit stop and play one more time okay and I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this as well and then what I'm gonna do is I want to hover over this and then I'm just gonna copy this so this is one of the cool things and features about code is I can I can say okay evaluate that and it says non identifier JSON even though I'm telling it to convert it to JSON let me make sure non identifier the other thing that I could also use is we can use the we can do it this way too I want to make sure that JSON utility is available for some reason the JSON utility which it is available at this point and I see it and I see image URL so I'm going to step into I'm going to keep play and then body it's not set just yet which is really strange and that might be one of the issues here okay so let me let me change this a little bit okay so what I'm going to do is I want to make sure this is being serialized so I'm going to say this is going to be image we can just say JSON data and then let's just do that and then to JSON this takes in an object okay so this should work let me just call JSON here and it takes in an overload let me make sure that let me look at the overload here oh this is whether I want to pretty print or not okay so we don't need that so let me go ahead and add a breakpoint here the other thing that we can also do is add debug.log and the JSON data. And I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't tested this because I just wrote it all and then, you know, just submitted it. But I've done it so many times that I felt comfortable with it. But obviously it's not working, so it's okay. We'll, we'll get it working. The other thing that I can think that I can think of as an issue is this object is not serializable. And that's why it's not serializing. So that's probably what the issue is. Let me go ahead and start the... Okay, let me stop here and let's stop this from the debugger do this one more time and there we go so if we go ahead and step it, okay so I think that's the issue because it's not converting this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flag this and this is gonna be system that serializable and let's see if that makes any difference normally that's what the issue is and we can hit just gonna hit play to stop it and then hit play to play again step over it and we still not see image URL as serializable and let me make sure this is public class image URL to JSON and then JSON utility and this is really strange because normally this type of thing works Okay, so let me do one more thing and I noticed that I had issues with properties in the past so let me go ahead and do this change it to be just a fill and I'm gonna hit play and I done this a million times and then of course it doesn't work when you want it to show somebody so that's normally the rule of thumb for developers 
and if we hover over this we can now see the data so yeah that was my that was my concern is i think the issue is is basically that this needs to be a field let me go ahead and make this not serializable just to just to know exactly what the issue was okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit play to stop it and then hit play to start it again and we can look and see if this yeah and that that was the issue so you can see that i can it's now being serialized and now if we go into here and then we we should be able to see that in the editor as soon as this is done then i'm going to hit play to go into my request and then i should see the data now and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to step over and in this case we are passing headers because and we can see both headers being passed in now if i go a step over it's going to set the headers on the web request and i'm sure we can probably find those headers in here if i go in and look at some of these variables let's see upload handler i don't know where unity puts them content type and then so it's probably here somewhere and let me study members uri and okay so i know that it's going through i just don't know which property but that's how you set headers and then if we step over we can so now we're basically setting the body and we have the body set correctly now i can go through i can step over it's going to be a sync so we won't see the response until later on and what I could do probably is just put a breakpoint in my callback which happens to be this one right here and then if we go back into unity we are getting so you can see that the data is now getting displayed displayed correctly so let me do this one more time and then we can go in and make sure our callback is getting called okay so I'm going into that and I'm going to hit play and I want to see if we're getting, you know, to this point right here, and then also to this point right here. I'm going to hit play. And I think what's happening is this is not giving us a network error. It's actually throwing it on authorized right away. And because I'm not capturing that, it's basically erroring out. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing calling that API, I want to show you how easy it is to make your own api so if you haven't downloaded the .NET core tools so i'm using .NET core you can probably do this on on any you know you can do this in node you can do this in you know in in other type of web services technologies so i'm going to use .NET core for this so what i can do is i can say okay i want to create a new web service and it's going to be it's going to be of type web api so it's going to say okay that a new web api and it's just gonna create a it's just gonna create a web service for me. And it happened to choose the option which is called videos. Let me see that. Yep, and it, we have we have an API called videos. So the other thing that I can do is I can say okay that net run and it's gonna run a web service for me. And I'm pretty sure there's a controller in there that automatically has an endpoint for us. So I'm gonna say, let me go into that code and we can do i think i put these on the, yep, other videos and then what i'll do is i'll open a new version of code and then we can look and see what the controller is yeah so so by default that net core adds a values controller and this is a controller that we can use to test all of these this requires that's a bill okay yeah sure we can we can get whatever whatever it needs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a breakpoint here. I'm also going to add a breakpoint here. And we can also do one on the post, one on the put, and then also one in here. Perfect. And then what I'll do is let me make sure. So this is just to show you that, you know, we have a web service listening on that part. So if I go here and I do 5,000, and of course this is, let me make sure this is listening on HTTP or yeah, I think HTTP is fine. And then there was a values. There was basically a values endpoint. And yeah, I know this. We can just say unsafe. And let me see what the what the default route is going to be, which happened to be, okay, so we need to include the API. 
and this is our endpoint. So this is the one, the one that is hitting. So I know that this is working because we're returning the, so the web server is returning, this is working fine. So what if I wanted to debug this and see and make sure that Unity can call into it? So this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to go ahead and attach it because I'm already running. So this is going to tell me, okay, which, which one do you want to attach it to? And let's go ahead and do this instead of attaching it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and go into my console. I'm going to kill this, go back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, you know what? I want to, I want to attach core. Or what I could do instead, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to run it. There we go. And it'll attach itself. I think that's the easiest option because I didn't know which, which ID was the current process. Okay. So now we're attached to the debugger. So I want to show you if we go back into our Unity and I go into here. So let's test the get. So I'm going to do, so I show you the example here and I think they should work fine. So what I'm going to do is instead of modifying this example, I'm going to create a new example. Let's go into Unity. And in this one, we can say, okay, this one is going to be REST client demo. This is going to be for the first example. And what I'll do here, I'll just say REST client demo. We can say REST client Azure demo. And this is, this is going to be the one that we're using for Azure. But let's say that we wanted to use to a get that was, you know, simpler. We can just do this other demo. And this one is just going to be REST client get. I just call it simple get and then reload. It's going to change this scene. And then what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to change this example. So I'm going to go into my scripts and I'm just going to duplicate this. And then we can just say rest client, uh, rest, say rest client example, say get example. Or we can just say, I think, I think get is fine. And then I can give you more options later on. Okay, so this is going to be for that. Let's go ahead and go back into the code. And I'm going to go here. And okay, and this one is going to be get example. And the URL is going to be different. This is going to be the one that I'm running on localhost, which is going to be this one. So this is going to be the one that you're running your web service from. We can just do that. And yeah, I think that's fine. In this case, I don't need a client ID and I don't need a secret because we're keeping it very basic. So I don't need these. I don't need to set up any headers. I don't need to set up an image. I don't need to set up a JSON data. So it's basically just going to be a get, a very simple get. Awesome. And then in this case, I'm just going to do HTTP, HTTP get. We're going to pass in the base URL. And we're not going to need, the only thing that we're going to need here is going to be the callback. And then we don't need headers. So it's going to be fairly simple. And let me see what I'm missing here, just to make sure. Okay, I need one more parenthesis. And then we have our own request complete. We don't need this image URL. And I'm just gonna clean it up. So when I check it in, you have the you have the latest code. So just recommenting. Okay, so this is good. I'm just gonna copy this, and now go back into Unity. And then we're just going to change the subject a little bit. So this subject is going to, we're still going to need a REST web client because that's going to be our singleton. Oh, and that's why my singleton, I see, because I had the mono behavior associated. Okay. I'm thinking about something else, but okay. So I'm going to add a REST client get example, which is the one that we just created. And this is the only thing that we need. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need the route. And normally I separate those two. I have not only the base URI, but I have a route that we're going to be calling to. So I'm going to go into here and then I'll just do, we can just do a string interpolation here. And I don't need the, uh, I don't need the forward slash because I already have it. And then we can just do, we can just do it this way. All right. So we're just going to call this API and then this is going to be the route that we're calling. And then I'm going to add a breakpoint here. Let me also add a breakpoint right here because I want to show you how everything works. Okay, so I think I'm good to go there. I'm going to go here and attach the debugger. So now I should have two debuggers running. One is going to be on the web service side and then the other one is going to be in Unity. So now let's go into Unity 
and before I forget I'm gonna do one more thing go to file build settings and I'm gonna add this as an open scene and let me do the same thing on the other scene this is so that you have them if you want to build them to your platform and then I'm just gonna move this one up okay so we should have the two there all right so I think we're good to go let me go back into my other example okay so we're good to go so I'm gonna hit play and everything is gonna start executing so this is the new example that we created using the get and we're using our singleton I'm gonna hit play we should be hitting our get method which we are the URL should include the route that we're calling which it does and then I'm gonna step basically I'm gonna hit play I should be hitting our web service so let me make sure that we are hitting the web service looks like we're not let me see if we got any errors in the console and unknown so we did hit an unknown error so I found the issue of why we couldn't call the HTTP web service so what I need to do if I'm using that net core I need to disable HTTPS redirection if you want to use HTTPS you would have to look at unity documentation for including a certificate so for now I just removed that and then the other thing that I needed to do as well was remove the HTTPS from the pattern and then the last thing was let me make sure that I think that was everything to be honest so now if I go in and execute the web service we should be able to look at the data and call the endpoints without having to do HTTPS so you can see that we're starting with 5000 which is the HTTP port and I can do a web call and if we look in here and I do HTTP now so that is clear we we'll still be able to call it so that part is working so now if we go back into unity and we hit play so the port that we're calling it's going to be the wrong port so let me go ahead and stop it so it's going to be 5000 and then I need to also do 5000 in here which is going to be for HTTP and then I need to change this to be just HTTP uh, let me hit play to stop it okay and then then let's go ahead and okay so that's safe and then let's go ahead and do the same thing here so just HTTP and that's the port okay so now I'm gonna hit unity and then we should be able to now call the other web service okay and let's hit play and we should be able to hit play hit play and now we're hitting a web service if we go hit play we go back into unity there's no network error we are completed and then we're getting the data back which is value one and value two and then we should be able to now call or call back but if you look in here we're getting you know value one and value two so now if I put a breakpoint on here and this one which actually didn't trigger for some reason I think it's because we're doing everything asynchronously but I can see that the data came back and also the status code so let's go ahead and do this one more time so you can see how it works so if I hit play I'm gonna call my get method so this is gonna go ahead and call the get method in the unity networking and then we're calling a web service we're getting data back and then I'm making a call to the callback which basically lands in here so that's all working just fine so if we wanted to say that I wanted to also call let's go back in here let's say that I wanted I wanted to do a get with you know with an actual ID I could basically specify an ID the other thing that we could test as well and it'll be the last thing that I check in this video is we could actually do a call on the on the post so let's go back into our example and for unity and I'm gonna go here and this one is gonna be for get and I think for this one it's fine we can just do another call here and I'm just gonna do a post we can do HTTP and then post and then if we look at the route let me go back to the route it, it's gonna be the exact same API values but it's gonna take a body as the value so this is still gonna be valid and then we're gonna need to do body so on the body we could probably just do I just do a string here and on this one I'm going to let's go ahead and do an object so that I yeah so so make sure that everything is gonna work so I'm just gonna do we can do public class this is gonna be let's see we're posting a player for instance 
and let's make sure that we give some properties to the player and just say full name I think I think full name is fine and then what I'll do here I'll just say JSON utility go to JSON and then we just create a new player and then we'll just say full name is going to be John Doe and I think we need we have a parenthesis there and then here's our callback and let me just go ahead and add these two new lines so you can see everything so, so every, everything that it takes to call so we don't need to do a, a get call anymore so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment out that one and then we can just add another comment here this one is gonna be sent a post request and we can go ahead and we can just stop this one hit play again and then what I'll do is I'll just hit play here go back into okay so we have a breakpoint there so the way this is going to work if we're going to hit play it's going to call our post we can see should be able to see full name yep which we're seeing also the URL and then a call back and then if I hit play I should be able to see so this work successfully and then I'm getting basically bytes back and then data so this is on supporting media type because I'm not telling it what kind of data I'm gonna I'm gonna need so right now this is saying from body and then a string so let me make sure that this post is going to work which I'm deciding oh I see which is gonna be application type and then so I think the issue here is that we are not telling it what type the response is taking so right now it's just a string and it's just a value I would need to create an object in here in order for it to parse correctly so if we want to just to test the the idea of this working we can go back in here and I see what's happening so let's go back into the this example I'll show you how the, how, how to make it work with the complex type but for now just to test this we can just say you know what the web service requires that we just pass in you know just a value which is going to be a string we can just say John Doe which happens to be a string value so we just say okay we're going to send John Doe and we want to get John Doe back so it's going to say play and then yep, and then go back into unity and I'm going to hit play to stop it and let's go ahead and hit play one more time and then we're just going to hit play we're going to hit play again and this is now trying to get the data back and let me make sure that this is hitting our web service okay so I think I know why the post is not working and it's not working because we haven't specified the header and I'm glad that I did made it optional but in this case we're going to need it for the post so if we go in here and we look at the object so this is going to be for the core routine but I'm going to do exactly what we did on the other example I'm going to need to pass in the request headers so I'm going to go in and look at the example that we just created and then I'm just going to copy the request header snippet go back to our new example this one I'm going to pass in a couple of things that we're going to need so if you're going to need we're going to need to specify the content type so it's going to be content type and then this is going to be application json so that's what we're going to be putting in the headers and then I'll just go ahead and pass in a new list and then this one is going to be request header just like we did before and then inside we'll just put in the new header except this is going to be just headers I just say call header and then pass that in here and make sure the time list can now be found because I haven't added the using statement all right so let's try and see if this is going to fix the issue and I'm going to back into debug mode, run this I'm going to go back in to make sure that I'm still debugging which I am here okay and let's go back into Unity I'm going to hit play to stop it and play to replay the test okay so now we have a request header of content type I'm going to go ahead and undo actually step in, step in and then we're now hitting the post which is John Doe so I think that the thing that we needed was the headers is because the web service doesn't know what content type you're sending to it so needing the headers of being content type and application JSON 
was one of the requirements on the web service. So hopefully this gives you enough, enough information to be able to call you know, a post and also a get. One thing that I need to do here, because it's gonna be rest client get and post example. So let me rename this really quick before I call it good. So it's gonna rename this guy as well. Okay, and I think this should work. And then the last thing, I'll go into Unity and fix the, fix the scene name and also this mono behavior. So this one is going to complain because they now rename it. And that's fine, we can just go ahead and re-add it. And well, this one should be fine. Yep, it's gonna hit remove. We have our HTTP. Okay, so that looks good. And then I'll just rename this. Let me go into the project. And this one is gonna be get and post. So let me, okay, I think I see why, why I was complaining because I was renaming while I was changing. Okay, and this scene name for some reason didn't rename. Let me just rename this to. Okay, and there we go. So the other one's gone because, yeah, we renamed this one. And then let me go back in here, I'll fix this one more time. And we should have HTTP, this should be okay. And then we should be okay with the, the script as well. So let me go ahead and play this just to make sure that everything is working. And then, okay, I can now, okay, that's because I, the web service is not running anymore, so I'm just gonna run it. And we should get two responses. Okay, so we're now running, go back into Unity, hit play. And this should be our first call, which is the get, so that's working. And then our next call, which is a post, which is also working. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And, and also be sure to check out GitHub where I'm gonna be posting this code. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you and mentioned in this video, let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.